Hey there, I'm Alex. Just your average 18-year-old high school senior, or at least I thought so. Being the oldest in a single-parent household is a whole different ballgame. It's just me, my mom Sarah, and my two younger siblings. Tommy 10 and Emma 8. Don't get me wrong, I love those two, but sometimes it feels like I'm more of a parent and a sister. Alex, can you help Emma with her homework? I'm running late for work. Sure, Mom, no problem. That's pretty much our daily soundtrack track. Sarah's always in a rush, always stressed, and always leaning on me to fill in the gaps. Hey, Tommy, where's your lunch? Did you forget it again? Sorry, Alex. Mom was on the phone. It's cold, buddy. I'll whip something up real quick. It's not that Sarah's a bad mom. She's just overwhelmed. Single parenting isn't a walk in the park. I get it. But sometimes I wonder if she remembers I'm still a kid, too. Despite all the chaos, I've managed to keep my grades up on a rule, baby. And with graduation right around the corner. I've been counting down the days for years. Alex, guess what? I got an A on my science project. That's awesome. Emma, high five. Alex wins your graduation again. Tommy asks next Friday. You guys are coming, right? Wouldn't miss it for the world, sis. But just a week before the big day, Sarah drops a bombshell on me. Alex, honey, I need a favor. I Shen's words spell trouble. What's up, mom? I've got a date next Friday night. Could you watch the kids? My heart sinks faster than a lead balloon. But mom, that's my graduation night, all right? I forgot, but this is really important, Alex. I haven't been on a date in ages. Can't you reschedule? He's only in town for one night. Please, Alex, the kids love you, and it's just one evening I want to scream to tell her how unfair this is. But instead, I hear myself say, Sure, Mom. No problem. You're the best honey I owe you one. As she walks away, I feel anger and disappointment bubbling up inside me, but I push it down like always. That's what the responsible older sibling does. Right later that night, I'm helping Emma with her math homework when Tommy bursts in. Alex, can you help me with my history project? It's due tomorrow. Tommy, why did you start earlier? I forgot, please, Alex, mom's working late again. I ask, glancing at the clock. It's already 9 p.m., and I've still got my own pile of homework waiting. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with two hours later. Both kids are in bed, and I'm staring at my untouched textbooks. My phone buzzes. It's my best friend, Jess. Hey, Alex, you pumped for graduation? I just picked up my cap and gown. I hesitate. Unsure how to break the news. Yeah, about that. What's wrong? You're not bailing, are you not? By choice, mom's got got a date, and I'm on babysitting duty. What? No way that's messed up, Alex. You can't miss graduation. I don't have a choice, Jess. You know how it is. This isn't fair. You've worked so hard. Uh, can't you talk to her? I tried. It's no use. As I hang up, I glance at my honor roll certificate pinned to the wall. All of those late nights studying all those sacrifices and for what to miss. The one night that's supposed to celebrate it all. I crawl into bed feeling a mix of resentment and resignation. Little do I know this is just the beginning of a storm that's about to turn my life upside down. The big day finally arrives, but it feels like any other morning I'm up early helping Tommy and Emma get ready for school. It's their last day before summer break, and they're bouncing off the walls with excitement. Alex, can you braid my hair? I want to look extra pretty today. Emma chirps, sure thing squirt, come here while I'm braiding Emma's hair. Tommy bursts into the room, his backpack half open and paper spilling out. I can't find my permission slip for the end of your party. I sigh, finishing Emma's braid. Did you check your desk? Yeah, it's not there. All right, let me take a look after a frantic search. We find the crumpled slip under Tommy's bed, crisis averted. Mom rushes through the kitchen, grabbing her coffee. I'm running late, Alex. Remember you're babysitting tonight. I should be back by midnight. Yeah, I remember. I'm M. She's out the door before I can say anything else. No good luck on your graduation. Or I'm sorry, I'll miss it. Nothing. As soon as the kids are off to school, my phone rings. It's Jess. Alex, can you believe it? We're graduating today. Her excitement is infectious, and for a moment I forget about my situation. I know it's crazy. I'm heading to the salon to get my hair done, want to join Reality Crashes back. I can't, Jess, remember. I'm babysitting tonight. All right, God, I still can't believe your mom is making you do this. It's so unfair. Tell me about it as we talk. I can't help but think back to a few months ago when Jess and I were filling out college applications. We had stayed up all night dreaming about dorm rooms and all the amazing college experiences we'd have. We're going to take the world by storm, Alex Jess had said her eyes shining with excitement. Now it feels like the world is leaving me behind, evening rolls around, and mom's all dressed up for her date, how do I look? She asks, twirling in her new dress, great, I say flatly. You know, it's not too late to change your mind, the ceremony doesn't start for another hour. 
She barely glances at me. Alex, we've been over this. I need this night out. You'll have other milestones, and just like that, she's gone. I settle on the couch with Tommy and Emma, loading up the live stream of the graduation ceremony on my laptop. Why aren't you there? Alex Emma asks, her brow furrowed in confusion. Someone needs to look after you, too, I say, trying to keep the bitterness out of my voice as pomp and circumstance starts playing. I feel a lump form in my throat. Tommy must notice, because he suddenly declares, let's have our own graduation party before I know it. The kids are running around gathering supplies. Emma returns with a makeshift cap made for from construction paper, while Tommy presents me with a diploma he scribbled on printer paper. We now present Alexandra with her high school diploma, Tommy announces in his best principal voice. Despite everything, I can't help but smile. Thanks, guys. This means a lot. We settle back on the couch and I try to focus on the ceremony, but my phone keeps buzzing with messages from friends. Where are you? We SVU a seat, Alex. You're missing everything. Each message feels like a punch to the gut. I watch his name after name is called, seeing my classmates walk across the stage accepting their diplomas and moving their tassels. When they call Alexandra Johnson, there's a pause. I can almost feel the confusion in the auditorium. Jess sends me a video of the principal awkwardly moving on to the next name as the ceremony ends in celebration by cool. And the gang blasts through my laptop speakers. I feel tears welling up, sensing my mood. Tommy and Emma snuggle up close. We love you, you, Alex, Emma says softly. Yeah, you're the best big sister ever, Tommy adds. I have them tight, grateful for their love, but unable to shake the feeling that I just missed one of the biggest moments of my life. And for what? So mom could go on a date as my thumb continues to blow up with messages and photos from the after party. I can't help but wonder when lie be my turn to celebrate the next morning. I'm in the kitchen making breakfast when mom stumbles in looking like she's been hit by a truck. Her makeup smeared and she reeks of booze morning. Alex, she mumbles, heading straight for the coffee maker. I slam his spatula down. Really, that's all you have to say. She winces at the noise. Keep it down, will you? My head's killing me. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have a nice night? Must have been some date to make you forget your daughter's graduation. Mom's about to respond when the doorbell rings. She freezes, panic flashing across her face. I'll get it, I say. Stomping to the door, I swing it open to find a tall, slightly disheveled man standing there. Hi, I'm... Mike, is Sarah here? She left her phone in my car. My jaw drops. You're kidding me, right? Mom appears behind me, grabbing the phone. Thanks, Mike. I'll call you later as she tries to shut the door. I block it. Hold up. You said you'd be back by midnight. You spent the night with him. Mike looks confused. Sarah, didn't you tell her we've been seeing each other for weeks? The world starts spinning. Weeks. What about all those work emergencies? Mong's face says it all. She's been lying for weeks. I slam the door in Mike's face and whirl on her. How could you, Alex, I can explain. Explain what, how you've been sneaking around. How you made me miss my graduation for a guy you've been seeing behind our backs. Our shouting match is interrupted by just showing up with my cap and gown. Hey, Alex, I brought... Oh, am I interrupting something? No, I say grabbing the gown, come on in. Mom was just leaving. Jess hesitates, but follows me to my room. She pulls out her phone, showing me graduation photos. It was amazing, Alex. I wish you could have been there as we scroll through the pics. Something catches my eye. Wait, go back. It's a Facebook post from Mom. Time stamped during the ceremony. So proud of my baby girl graduating today. Proud Mom. My blood boils. She knew she remembered. She just didn't care. I storm out finding Mom in a living room with Tommy and Emma. You posted about my graduation while you were out with Mike. Tommy and Emma look up, confused. What's going on? Emma asks nothing, sweetie Mom says quickly. Alex and I are just having a disagreement. A disagreement. You lied to all of us for weeks. The next hour is a blur of accusations, tears, and slam doors. By the end. Tommy and Emma are crying Mom's mascara streaks down her face while I stand there shaking with rage. I retreat to my room and pull out the acceptance letter. I've been hiding a full scholarship to a university across the country for a while. I wasn't sure if I could go worried about leaving Tommy and Emma behind. But now, now I grab my phone but the number on the letter and say, Hi, this is Alexander Johnson. I'm calling to accept my place in a fall semester. As I hang up a weight lifts off my shoulders. It's time to put myself first for once. The weeks blur by in a whirlwind of packing and goodbyes. Jess and my friends are over almost every day, helping me sort through years of memories. Mom hovers in the doorway, looking lost. 
Alex, can we talk? I sigh, exhausted. What is it, Mom? I'm sorry. Okay, I messed up. I didn't mean to hurt you. She pleads. Her voice cracking, her words fall flat. It's too late for that, Mom. You made your choice. Tommy and Emma take it the hardest. They cling to me every chance they get. Do you have to go, Alex? Emma asks, her eyes filling with tears. I kneel down to her level. I do, sweetie, but I promise we'll video chat all the time. Okay, when departure day arrives. My friends help blow up the car. I hug Tommy and Emma tight. Be good, okay? I love you both so much. Mom stands awkwardly to the side. Drive safe, she says, her voice strained. I noun stiffly and climb into the driver's seat. As I glance back, I see the reality hit her. She's losing her eldest child and her built-in babysitter. One year later, I'm thriving in college. My roommate Kira has become my best friend, and I'm acing my classes during one of our weekly video chats. Tommy excitedly shows me his science fair ribbon. I won first first place Alex. That's awesome, buddy. I'm so proud of you, but I can't help noticing the strain in their voices whenever they talk about mom. She's struggling without me to pick up the slack later. Just text me. Your mom's on another Tinder date. Tommy called me to bat bit again. I shake my head. Some things never change. Months fly by. And before I know it, I'm donning another cap and gown. This time surrounded by friends who have become my family. As I wait to walk across the stage, my phone buzzes. It's a text from Tommy. We're watching a live stream. So proud of you, sis. I smile, knowing Tommy and Emma are cheering me on. But there's a twinge of sadness imagining Mom sitting at home watching me graduate without her again. When they call my name, Alexander Johnson Suma come loud. I stand tall and proud after the ceremony amid the hugs and congratulations. I check my phone. There's a message from Mom. Congratulations, Alex. I'm sorry for everything. I hope someday you can forgive me. I stare at the message for a long moment before putting my phone away. Maybe someday, but not today. Today is about celebrating how far I've come and looking forward to the future I fought so hard to create. As I pose for photos with my friends, I realize something family isn't always about blood. Sometimes it's about the people who stand by you, who support your dreams, who show up when it matters most, looking around at my chosen family. I know I found exactly where I belong. Now here's my question for you. Was I right to cut ties with my mom, or should I have given her another chance? What would you have done in my shoes? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective might help someone going through a similar situation. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Your support means the world to me and helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.